years. It was a perfect crime. He got away. Mysteries. There's a lot of people that don't want this talked about. Cold cases. There was evidence of a struggle. Tonight, the brutal crimes. I was afraid they were going to kill her. The families fractured. Of all people, this would happen to Shelly. And the loved ones still fighting for justice. She didn't deserve this. Fighting to find the missing pieces. Here are Len Kennan and Mia Gradney. Solving a murder is like putting a puzzle together. If you don't have all the pieces, you can't solve it. So for the next hour, we're taking a fresh look at cold cases with the hopes that maybe there is someone who can make a difference and turn a cold case into a closed case. Grace White begins tonight with a killer secret. A brunette with a show-stopping smile. She was voted best personality her senior year. She was voted most talented. She was voted Miss School Spirit. 19-year-old Shelly Sykes is the last person anyone thought would be murdered. I thought, Shelly, of all people, this would happen to Shelly. Her mother, her sister, and police believe they know who did it. Two men went to prison, convicted of kidnapping Shelly in 1986, but her body was never found. It was Memorial Day weekend and Galveston was packed, but one night of party fueled by alcohol and drugs turned to murder. Where was she the night that she disappeared? She had was at work at Guido's and had gotten off work and was headed home. It was right here. Detectives found Shelly's car. The driver's door was right here. Right off the causeway. A blue Ford Pinto. We found video of it digging through boxes of evidence at the Galveston County Sheriff's Office. And pictures few people have ever seen. Her clothing, her shoes, her tennis shoes. Despite the evidence, detectives had no suspects until a year later when an El Paso dispatcher got this call. What, what, how can I help you? I think I know something about uh, a girl that's missed from Galveston County. Uh huh. What's her name? Shelly Sykes. It was John King on the phone, and soon after came an arrest. Oh, I was, ex I was like jumping up and down. I said, We got you. But then came a twist. In a chilling note, King said he wasn't alone, and a guy named Gerald Zwarst might know where to find Shelly's body. This was their stomping grounds. I mean, they were familiar. This area was a well-known area for the kids to hang out and party. Investigators say King and Zwarst picked Sykes at random. They harassed her, she flipped them off, and they ran her off the road. When they had buried her, they realized she was still alive because the dirt was moving. And uh, they took a shovel and began beating it till it, she stopped. To hear those kind of things and know how terrified she must have been, and it, it's just horrible. No family should ever have to go through anything like that. But Shelly's mother, Erin, had to live with the fact that King and Zwarst wouldn't be tried for murder. Because there was no body, they were only convicted of aggravated kidnapping with life sentences, which at the time carried 40 years. It's like a, it's like a sore that can never heal. Shelley's family spent the past decade fighting parole, even offering to grant both men immunity if they led police to Shelley's body. But instead, it turned into a wild goose chase, first with King. When King first brought you guys out here, what'd you think? We kind of thought that, you know, she's going to be buried behind his house. Then Zwarst led investigators to this blouse found in a sand pit. It looked just like her work uniform, but her family still isn't convinced. I know the papers and everyone says that, that it was hers. We really don't know if it was hers. In the end, detectives think Shelley's body was moved. But King died in prison in 2015. There was relief because I wouldn't have to fight his parole anymore. 
But then there was anger because he died without telling us where Shelly was. Leaving only Gerald Zwarst. He swore to this day that if he knew where she was moved, he'd tell us. So. You believe him? I have no reason not to. It's from the 80s after all. There's her second birthday. Shelly's family is not giving up. I don't want him to have any kind of a good life to live because he certainly didn't allow my sister to have any kind of a good life to live. Zwarst is up for parole this year and they're preparing for a fight. Still hoping one day they can bring their sweet Shelly home. We asked Gerald Zwarst to talk with us, but he declined our request for an interview. His parole hearing is scheduled for August. He must have upset somebody. Now to a murder that Rock City Hall, a powerful man, a mover and shaker killed and his house burned. Grace White is on the trail of a killer to find out who started the fire. It's hard to see past the flames. You know, it, it just shocked us all. But when the dust settled, the emotion became raw, and the crime scene crowded with Houston's most powerful politicians. I'm just so happy. <laughs> In 2003, firefighters found Houston lobbyist Ross Allen shot to death and his Timber Grove Manor home set on fire. He lived life, I like to say, he lived life with the throttle wide open. His brother, who lives in Dallas, tells us 13 years later, it's hard to believe the killer was never caught. What do you think happened? It sure doesn't appear to be some, some random event, some stranger that he brought home. He, he must have upset somebody. Allen was behind some big deals at City Hall. The night he died, he even attended a political fundraiser for former Houston Mayor Anise Parker. So he knew a lot of things, maybe too much. Paul Gomberg was the last friend to see Allen alive. The two had dinner together at Hickory Hollow on Heights Boulevard and were preparing for an upcoming court date. In a case that I was uh, being sued in, and he was like my star witness. But Allen was killed that night, the same night he left this voice message for his friend. I wouldn't be surprised. And, you know, they get know where I am, they know I'm coming and going, and I, you can see him around by the pool. It's so easy to put a you know, uh, a recording device in somebody's house. Could his phone have been bugged? There's no proof. He was known to dabble in drugs, which his family says could have triggered paranoia, but he had a bad history with secret recordings. The FBI indicted Allen's former boss, a city councilman, for bribery, and he went to prison. Allen got sucked in too, but his case was later dismissed. So was his murder a political hit? A drug deal gone bad, or a male hustler taking advantage of an openly gay lobbyist. It's all been explored. I've never seen a body burnt to that extent. HPD's cold case investigators say Allen was shot in the neck, but police never recovered the gun. They found his body near the front door. What will it take to solve this case? I believe that the perpetrator or perpetrators told someone else and there's someone else who has some information. Allen's family tried desperately to get answers, even putting up billboards around town with a $10,000 reward. It got little response, but Allen's funeral at St. Anne's, where he attended mass regularly and served as an usher, was overflowing. You know, I love my brother to death, but I, I had no idea that he had touched so many lives. Lives police have been digging through, looking for a motive. But all these years later, this family is still searching for the killer that took the light out of their world. Some people would say closure. I don't know that it's really closure as much as it's the resolution to, you know, finding out who did this. Why did this happen to my brother? At the time of his death, Ross Allen was working on two big deals, an airport contract and a housing project. Deals investigators say could be a motive. And if you know anything that could help solve this case or any of the mysteries we feature tonight, call Crime Stoppers. Two girls' lives brutally cut short. A cheerleader goes to a party and is murdered. Once you've seen your sister's burned remains, no, you never forget that. A town is tight-lipped, but a witness is talking. Will he share the small town's secret? But first, a young girl sneaks out of her bedroom window in Connecticut. Did you think she would come home? I did. Yes. And winds up dead outside Houston, near the infamous killing fields. Why did she end up here? That's next.
A Sunday school teacher and successful businesswoman robbed at gunpoint in her own garage and then dragged to her death. 30 years later, police are still searching for her killer. Grace White digs into this cold case to find out why she was the target. She was a Sunday school teacher. She was the glue that kept us together. With a warm heart. She always had a cherry pie, and that was my favorite. But who would want Opal Lee Zacharias dead? She was living the American dream, married and running a liquor store with her husband. Big change, big change. Brings back a lot of memories. Charles Payton is the nephew she raised like a son. This was the drive through Now, 30 years later, he wonders why Lance Bedgood, the man police say pulled the trigger, is still on the run. He uh, took her life, and he's continued on, and it just doesn't seem right. It was 1987. She was at home with her husband, getting ready for work. He left, leaving the garage door open. And when she came out, two men were waiting. Police say she was shot and then run over as one of them raced down the driveway in her car. So this is where it happened? This is where it happened. Uh, we believe that the vehicle was inside the garage. Detective Paul Vela with HPD's cold case unit is trying to dig up new leads on the prime suspect, a man with a long criminal history who was out on parole at the time of her murder. For someone to come in and just take her away from, you know, her husband kind of hit people in a certain area. But why did he choose her? Both investigators and the family believe he followed her home from the store because he thought she had money. She would give anybody anything and not hide it. But a month before the murder, her sister called, concerned. She bought things that they brought in to sell, and she really thought she was helping their families. And, uh, you know, I told her, I said, those are not your friends. You were worried somebody was going to take advantage of her. I was afraid they were going to kill her. But it wasn't just the store where she was vulnerable. The family owned a fourplex behind it. They rented out. What we think happened is someone was living back here who knew that Lance Bedgood. They came and visited. They went to the store. They all saw the jewelry she had on. But even though that's what may have lured her killer, investigators say he got away with just her car and purse. Both he ditched and disappeared. America's Most Wanted featured the cold case. Houston, Texas. And tips came in on possible sightings from Florida and North Carolina to Michigan. Do you think over the years people have covered for him? I believe there are people who have covered for him. I believe people are afraid of him. This is what police believe he may look like now. Lance Bedgood would be 73 years old with a scar over his right eye and tattoos. I would really like to see a, a final answer. An answer her husband never got. He died years ago without seeing a resolution to the case. It's a mystery that's always haunted this family. Yeah. And still decades later, they only want one thing. That person receives his punishment for taking such a wonderful lady from this earth. All these years later, there is still an active murder warrant out for Lance Bedgood since our story first aired in May. Investigators found family living outside of Houston, but they say they lost touch with Bedgood and have no idea where he might be. Who killed this school janitor? This woman went to prison for it, but now she's free. It's been an emotional roller coaster. How dog sniffing evidence changed her life forever. I just prayed a lot. But first, it was a perfect crime. He got away. Did his son do the unthinkable to his own parents? People don't think it's possible. They don't think this actually happened. That's next.